In this lesson, we'll continue building our walkie-talkie. Before we get started, I'd like to go ahead and make a couple changes to the Rhino interface. Now, I prefer to work with a lighter background, and I think this will also make things a little easier for you to see on screen. So currently, we're in our wireframe setting, which is the standard or default setting when you open Rhino. We're going to switch to our shaded setting, and we can do this a couple of ways. We can click on our shaded icon. We can hit Control alt s and that'll switch us to shaded view. Or we can click in our perspective viewport here, pull down this tab, and select shaded from the menu. Now, I did just apply the shaded view, but because we don't have any poly surfaces in the scene, they haven't shaded, so it doesn't look any different. Let's go ahead and make the changes to the background. So a number of ways I can get here as well. One really fast way I can get into all of my document settings is just to right-click on this blue sphere. Now that takes you directly to the render settings, and that seems to me a little easier than going to File, Properties, which is the other way to get here. You'll ultimately end up at the same place, but to me this is just a little faster to click. Now I'm working in Rhino 5, and I will be throughout this course, but wherever there are some differences in Rhino 5 and Rhino 4, I will show you the differences. So this is how we make the change in Rhino 5. And then after this, I'll show you how you make the change in Rhino 4. So in Rhino 5, to customize any of our view settings, we go into our settings and we select View, then Display Modes. And you'll see we have our wireframe, shaded, rendered, and all of our other display modes that are available to us in Rhino 5. I'm just going to click on Shaded, and you can see Viewport Setting is set to Background and it's set to use application setting. That's by default, and that's what's giving us that dark gray background. I'm just going to click this to solid color, and then I'll click the solid color tab, and I'm going to make this 240, hit tab, 240, hit tab again to scroll to the next window. I'm just going to make these all 240. So that's going to give me a brighter window. I'm also going to scroll the wheel down here, and under my edge thickness, I'm going to leave the edge thickness at 2 pixels, but color reduction, I'm going to make that 65%. And what that'll do is any of my surfaces or poly surfaces that are shaded, instead of having their edges rendered in the same layer color, it'll reduce that color just a little bit to make it easier to see those lines. And that's kind of nice to work with. Also, I'll open my shaded plus sign here, go into Objects, and I'll click on Curves. And under Curve Usage, I'll leave this alone but I am going to change the curve width or number of pixels, and I'll make that 3. As I said, that's going to make things a lot easier for you to see on screen. I'll just hit OK to accept those changes. Now, I did mention in Rhino 4 that things are a little bit different, so let me just go ahead and switch on Rhino 4 for you. Now, this is Rhino 4, and I have the big Rhino 4 here to make sure that nobody's confused. So again, I access the same area by, again, right-clicking on the blue sphere or going to File, Properties. So in Rhino 4, we go into Appearance, and we switch to Advanced Settings, and here you can see we have our display modes. So again, I'm going to go to Shaded, I'll choose Background, Solid Color, and I'm going to use 240 as my number here. It's exactly the same setup we did for Rhino 5 at this point. So 240, 240, 240. I'll come down here, make my color reduction 65%. And then I'll click to open up objects, go to curves, and I'll make my curve thickness 3. I'll hit enter on that, and you can see my background has changed. And now let me switch back to Rhino 5. All right, so we're back in Rhino 5. I'll just click here to make sure we've set ourselves to shaded viewport. And you see instantly our background has changed to the new lighter color that we've given it. I will make a few other changes. Let's go to the front viewport here, and I'll do a Control Alt S to set that to shaded mode. And sometimes I feel like this grid gets in the way just a little bit. So I'm just going to hit F7, and that toggles that grid off. And then I'm also going to unlock my underlay layer. I'll select my picture frame. I'll go under Properties, and I'll select this kind of toothpaste-looking icon. I'll click in Transparency. I want to make this just a little more transparent. So I'll just double-click on that triangle, and I'm going to make this 85%. I'll go back to my layers, I'll relock that, and now that's nice and faint, and you'll see if I go into my perspective window, hit F7 to hide the grid there as well. You can see we've got a very faint sketch, and that's going to be perfect for drawing over. 
I'll set back to my front view, and I'm just going to save my document. So we'll do a file, save as, and then in chapter three, I'm going to name this walkie talkie sketch finish. And this will be our setup to start drawing our actual part.